Hi, everyone. You are joining the Surgical Technology Information Session with Davis and Davy Community College. Um, we are live streaming this and recording this session. So as you join, make sure you make sure you mute your mics. And we're going to give folks another minute or two to actually get logged on and join us. So we will get started shortly. Hey everyone, you've joined the Surgical Technology Information Session here at Davis and Davy Community College. As you join us, make sure you have muted your mics. Also, as you join us, oftentimes when you join via Zoom, it does not have your full name listed. So we really appreciate it if you could go ahead and just type your um, first and last name into the chat. That way we can make sure you get proper um, recognition for attending the session, because if you are planning to apply to the surgical technology program, this information session is a requirement of the application process. So again, if you're just joining us, make sure that you have muted your microphones for right now and that you include your name in the chat so we can give you credit for this. We are live streaming this session and recording it, so we can always send this to you later if you wanted to review it again. Um, we're going to kind of go ahead and get started. Today, we're going to talk about the actual application process. And, oops, sorry about that, guys. My computer's doing something a little funny. There we go. Try that again. There we go. <laughs> so I am Brooklyn Edwards. I'm the coordinator for special admissions and campus outreach here at Davis and Davy Community College. We've got quite a few people on the Zoom call to help answer any and all of your questions today. So we have Renee Bridges on the call. Um, we also have Dee Edwards. These folks work with our surgical technology program. Also, we have Sandra Ingram, who is the academic advisor for the surgical technology program over the Davy campus. So one of the key things we need to remember is this program, um, once you do get accepted to the program and you begin your coursework, this program is held at the Davie campus in Moxville. Many of you already know that, but I just wanted to make sure those of you that didn't were aware of that. So what we're going to do is we're going to kind of go over the application process. I'm going to show you screens of the actual application. So this is not new information for a lot of you. If you've already taken a look at the application, you can follow along. You'll also be able to ask questions. We're gonna make sure we give you plenty of times at the end to ask your questions. You may find that the questions you have coming into this meeting, we're gonna answer them along the way. And we hope that is our plan for this afternoon. But if not, feel free to um, chat your questions. Just put them in the chat box. We've got Kaylin Asip. She's the Director of Admissions here at Davis and Davy. She's gonna help answer those. We've also got those other faculty members um, and coordinators of the surgical tech program on this Zoom meeting so they can chime in and answer those questions via chat. First thing we're going to talk about is I'm just going to go over super quickly the different phases of the application and the admissions checklist and then we're going to break those down and go in a little bit more detail of those. So again if you're kind of joining us late make sure you're muted and just put your full name in that chat for us. Okay. So there's different phases to the application process with surgical technology. Um, the main one basically is 
picking up the application packet and reviewing it. Make sure you've read over everything on that packet. Um, it's very extensive, so don't let it overwhelm you. There's a lot of information there, um, but there's a lot of information there for a reason. We want to give you all the directives that you need to properly apply for the program. And then we also want to give you that information that you need that what happens when you get into the program, the kind of what happens next steps. And so we've got um, some folks from surgical technology, when I'm done talking, they're actually going to go over those things for you and let you know. So this is what happens once I'm actually accepted. Um, so the packet is very extensive for a reason because we just have a lot of information that we want to share with you and make sure you are kind of fully in the loop of what's going on with how to apply, how we do the ranking process um, to see if you're in the application, to see if you're in the program or not, and uh, what happens after that. So definitely want you to make sure you read over the packet, make sure you read over the conditionally accepted um, section of the packet, because that tells you what happens next once you're admitted. If you're a current student at Davis and Davie Community College, you've likely already applied to the school, you've probably already done your new student orientation, and you may already be doing classes with us. If you applied to the school prior to August the 13th, we will actually need you to reapply to Davis and Davie. Um, I know that seems odd, but we are using a new system for our application process, and it's to your benefit that we're using the system to do all of our ranking and our special criteria programs. So if you applied to Davis and Davy prior to August 13th of this year, we'll actually need you to reapply. Um, and so you can get into our new system. So you can get into the new application system. Once you're in that application system, you'll be able to upload information that you're going to want to send us for your surgical technology application. Okay. If you're a current student, you've already set up your Davis and Davy email. Um, you've already submitted transcripts, things of that nature. So we're gonna talk about those things in just a minute. Phase two, you're already ahead of the game. You are already participating in the surgical technology information session. So that is a requirement in phase two. Um, we're also gonna go over some relevant life experience that you might be able to use to gain points for the program application. And then we're gonna talk a little bit about how you submit your application for final review. Okay, so phase one, um, I was talking about admission or readmission if you're a current student um, before August the 13th, um, activating your Davis and Davies Storm Track email account. That is a very important key piece um, because once you start this process, when we communicate with you, we're actually going to be communicating with you via your Davis and Davies, Davis and Davy email account. Um, especially with your final decision, if you're in or out of the program, we're going to send it to that email address. So we want to make sure you're checking that along the way. Also, as you submit things in the portal, if we're checking those, if I have any questions, um, I'm going to reach out to you to your Davis and Davy email and say, hey, did you forget to submit this or did you mean to submit this? Um, and so we'll be reaching out to you because honestly, we want to make sure your application is as strong as it can be and that you can get as many points as possible for this program. It is a very limited entry program. They only accept 16 people in the program and we've got almost that many on the Zoom call now. So we already know the interest is there and there's going to be enough folks applying to make this a competitive entry process. So we want to make sure you get all the points possible. Um, so again, make sure you've got that Davis to Davis email set up and you check it regularly. You don't want to miss any important emails from us. Provide evidence of high school diploma. You can show us your high school diploma or your high school transcript. Many of you, if you're already students with us, you've already had that transcript sent to us and that is awesome. We will look at that and we will be able to mark that off in your application checklist that you have sent that to us, okay? Also, if you have courses from other colleges, okay? Um, we will accept courses that you've made a final grade of C or higher, okay? So if those are courses that we can apply to the surgical technology program and the application process, we will certainly use those. If you have a C or higher, please get those to us. Those must be official transcripts sent to our admissions office. Now, all of these steps that I'm outlining and talking to you about are in detail as well as in the packet. So these are just little bullet points on the screen that you're seeing, but when you actually review the actual application packet, there's a more extensive information on how to get those transcripts to us, where to send those. So, um, so there is more information out there for you. Okay. Another part of phase one is what we're looking at is to make sure you that you're English and math ready to be successful in the program. And what that means um, in the surgical technology program is we're looking at what we would 
signifies as a level one math. We do this by looking at your high school transcript. We're looking at at least a overall unweighted GPA of a 2.2 or higher for this program. Um, or if you're transferring in classes, we're going to look at the GPA. We're going to look at classes you've transferred in too, especially if you transferred in a college level English or math already. So each student is different. So we look at each one of you differently and to see what you have sent in to us and we'll assess as well to make sure that you are math and English ready for the program. Another big part of the application process that may or may not be relevant to you is the life experience portion. And what we look at, and you will see some specific examples in the application packet, is if you have any kind of other medical um, certifications. Some students come to us have already worked in the field and have other certifications. Um, they may be an LPN already. They may be an x-ray technician. Um, they can work in EMT, paramedic. So if you have any kind of medical certification like that, please make sure you upload that to your application portal because we want to see that. Because again, if that's something that we can use as relevant life experience, we want to use that to apply to the ranking system so you can get a point for that. Um, the main thing is any and all of these items that we're looking at on that checklist, and the checklist I'm referring to is on the last page of your application. And we're going to look at that in just a moment. Um, but when we're ranking you, it's your responsibility to make sure we have these items, okay? Making sure we have the transcripts, any kind of medical certification that you have. If you are a veteran or a member of the armed forces now, making sure that we have that information. Um, all of this must be um, uploaded to your application portal by January 27th by 5 p.m. So if you try to send us stuff after the deadline, we will not be able to review it. So make sure you're getting every documentation, every bit of information that you need to us um, by that date. Phase three. So phase one and two is your part. You are getting us the information. You're making sure it's um, you know, taken care of on your application checklist. And then once you are ready, once you've decided I have everything that I can possibly um, put on this application to make me a strong candidate, then in the application portal, it's going to say part of the checklist, submit for final review. When you select that and click on that, it's going to say, okay, are you sure you're ready to be considered for the surgical technology program? It's even going to ask again to make sure. So you can't really mistakenly submit for final review. We've had a couple of people do it every now and then. And if you mistakenly submit for final review before you're ready, please reach out to us. Um, there's an email at the end. There's the emails in the packet, but the, the last slide has our contact. So please reach out to us if you have mistakenly done that. But once you are ready for us to do the final review, you're actually going to submit that yourself on your application portal saying, yes, I'm ready for final review. Once you do that, again, we can't add anything else to it. Um, so make sure you do submit for the final review before the January 27th deadline. If you submit for final review today, next week or, or January, you're still not gonna get your decision until February. So once we go over the ranking system, all students, whether you made it into the program or you did not make it into the program, you will be notified via email by February the 24th. So again, doesn't matter how early or late you put in your application, we're still going to hold it and review and make sure everyone's reviewed before we put any kind of confirmations out to students, <clears throat> letting you know if you're in the program or not. Okay. This is where we're gonna send um, the confirmation if you're in or out, it's gonna go to that Davis and Davy email that I talked about that was so important that you set up and check regularly. Whether you're in the program or not, um, we will let you know, okay? So don't think you're only gonna get an email if you're in. We will send another, you know, send you an email if you were not selected. And we'll actually give you some further information if you weren't selected, what your next steps are. What are some other programs you might wanna do with us? or if you're really interested in doing surgical tech, some other steps you can do. The one thing to keep in mind with surgical tech though, it's an every other year start. So if you don't get in in fall of 23, you'll have to wait. So we would hope that everyone can get in, but again, there's only 16 seats available for this. So we will give you options if you're not selected, okay? And we will work with you on 
finding some next steps for you, okay? If you are chosen for the program, you will be sent information on what your next steps are, and that includes an intent form that you would need to get back to us. And we're gonna talk about that in a second. What I wanna take a look at real quick is the actual rubric. Again, everything is very transparent for you guys. Um, nothing's a secret. We want you to know exactly how we're going to rank you. So when you hit final review, you've done your own math and you should already know how many points you've got um, that should match up with the points that we're gonna give you. So there's two different pieces in the rubric that we're gonna look at. The first is gonna be your academics. So we're gonna look at, do you have any college credits? Do you have any anatomy courses, um, English, humanities, math? Do you have any of those, okay? Um, the second piece is life experience, and we'll take a look at that next. But with the courses, let's say, for example, you have anatomy. There's three different ways you can meet the anatomies. Um, you can do Bio 163, or you can do the combination of Bio 168 and 169. Or for the older, if you haven't taken anatomy a while and you're transferring in some older ones, the Bio 165 and 166, okay? All of those are anatomy and physiology courses that we can use for this program. And they're gonna be ranked by the grade. So again, if you transfer those in or you took those classes here at Davis and Davey, you have to have a C or higher in those courses to move forward. So the ranking starts at a C. So if you made a C in any of those classes you see on the screen, that's one point. If you get a B, it's two and A, a three. So of course, the higher the grade, the higher point systems you get. You do not have to have had all these classes taken to apply to the program, okay? And you don't have to have them all to begin the program. It's great if you do, because as you can see, the more courses that you have, the higher your points will be toward the program. Um, so it does help, but you're not excluded from applying or beginning the program if you don't have all these, okay? You can just see that it does make you a stronger candidate if you have more points. The next one we're gonna look at is that life experience that I mentioned earlier. Um, are you listed um, on the NA registry? Like, are you a CNA? Are you a veteran or member of the armed forces? Do you have any of those other active medical certifications? Do you have any of the central sterile processing courses with us? Um, there's, so there's several things there that you can take a look at that can give you points. You may look at that and think, well, that's only one point for that. But at the end, one point could really make the difference. Um, between you and another student getting chosen for the program. So anything that you can use, make sure, again, you get that to us by the deadline of January 27th. Okay. So like I said, we're going to email you to your Davis and Davis email. We're going to let you know by February the 24th if you're in or out. So if you are offered conditional acceptance to the program, you must accept or decline your seat in the program. Um, we're going to give you 10 days to do that. So part of that um, offer to conditionally accept you to the program, there's going to be an intent form that you will send back to us electronically. You have 10 days to send that back to us. Of course, we'll give you instructions on how to get that to us um, because we need to make sure that you want that seat. If you don't, then we would love to offer it to another student who is maybe next in line to get into the program. Um, we've already got the, the 10 calendar day date on the screen for you. It's in the packet. That is March the 10th. But again, once we send you that email letting you know that you are in the program, you have to actually let us know that you want to be in the program um, before we move forward, okay? So that was a lot and I know it went pretty quickly. Um, so again, if you have questions, you can put them in the chat. Um, and we're gonna allow you plenty of time at the end of this set to, to, you know, to ask and let's answer your questions. You've got plenty of knowledgeable people on this call that can answer your questions. So that is the application process. Again, make sure you've applied to Davison. So you have your surgical technology application checklist ready to go on the portal and you can start uploading information. If you have questions along the way, contact us. Um, the email is gonna be at the end, but the email is in the packet at pwsc at davisondavy.edu. Um, and once you submit for final review, that's it. So we're gonna review it um, and then you'll be notified if you're in or out, okay? So the next part, I wanna kick it over to, I believe Renee Bridges is gonna talk about um, what happens next. If you are accepted into the program, she's gonna go over the conditionally accepted um, piece 
So that way, you know, once you get into the program, what you need to do next, because as you know, you're going into a healthcare field. So you're going to look at several things, background checks, immunizations, lots of other things that you're going to need to know. So at this time, I'm going to let Renee take it over. All right. Thank you, Brooklyn. That was a lot of information. You did a great job. <laughs> Better than I could have. So, all right, everyone. My name is Renee Bridges. I'm the program director for surgical technology and central sterile processing. I also have um, on this um, session, Dee Edwards. She is the clinical coordinator for the program, and she will be chiming in here shortly um, about your clinical requirements. So once you receive an email saying that you are accepted into the program, um, I'll be reaching out to you um, in regards to a mandatory orientation that we will hold. Um, and this will typically, I can't remember the dates that we have, but once you are accepted, I believe it's in May, um, this will, we are gonna help you prepare for your clinical requirements that will be due for July 15th. So, um, and then D and I both will kind of uh, take you under our wings from that point and help you get prepared to start in the fall. Um, Sandra also plays a big role in this. She helps you get enrolled in courses, make sure you're enrolled. Um, she guides you on financial aid and whatever else that you may need um, to help you be successful when you start in the fall. Uh, since you're here today, I'm sure you have researched the program a little bit. I'm going to back up um, to let you know that we are a two-year associate's program. We are five consecutive semesters, and that includes the summer. So you will um, go throughout the summer session um, for semester three. Lecture and lab, like Brooklyn said earlier, are held on the Davie campus. So all your classroom and your lab settings will be um, done in Moxville on the Davie campus. And then we have clinicals that are held throughout various hospitals in the area. Um, Dee and I placed those individuals um, in, uh, based on what hospital needs and what, what slots that they have open to us, available for us. The SUR courses are very rigorous. So um, be prepared to spend a lot of time um, on these courses. I highly suggest completing any gen ed courses beforehand. You may not complete them all, but you, uh, it's best to get like your anatomies and such done before you start. Um, and then, like I said, once you're accepted, we will give you some additional dates uh, in regards to um, completing your clinical requirements. Dee, do you want to chime in on kind of overview what those are so they kind of know what's going on, what will be heading their way once accepted? Sure. Um, everyone will have to set up a Complio account, and it tells you a little bit on the screen exactly what they're looking for. Um, the Complio account will be $97. Um, that is something that each student will have to pay for. Um, you will do a background check, a drug screen, and then this is where you will list all your immunizations. It goes from the Tdap to MMRs to your CPR. Um, you will have to be CPR certified. It has to be through the American Heart Association. Um, again, next slide just came up. That gives you a great idea of what they're looking for too. Um, varicella. Um, a big thing too, when we're talking about the varicella also, we'll go back. Um, just because you had chicken pox, that is not acceptable. You have to have a titer drawn to say that you have the antibodies for it. So on the screen now is here everything that's listed. You are responsible for getting the flu vaccination. That is a hospital requirement. Also the COVID vaccination, that is a hospital requirement. Um, so right here, again, that gives you a great list of what you got to have. So right now is a great time to start looking at records, the state registry, um, your pediat pediatrician, if they're still there, all that good stuff, because this is where that you have to upload all this information into your Complio account before you go to clinical. 
we can jump to the next slide and it was showing you a little bit again about the CPR. Um, the school is a great place to offer CPR. CPR is every two years. So if you get it before you start the program, it should carry you through your clinicals till you graduate. Again, it has to be the American Heart Association only. Um, I think through the school, it's like 25, 40, to, I can't quite remember. You will go into Storm Track and register for it. Um, it's usually once a month, and it's usually in the evening from 6 to 10 o'clock in the evening. Um, you will get a card. You will have to upload front and back of that card. Then it jumps also to the next slide right here is for your eye examination, where you have to have an eye exam. And all that is, is in your packet, there is a form that you will get filled out and the doctor either needs to sign it or the office has an official stamp. And all it is, is a basic eye exam. So if anybody has any questions on that, pretty much you can jump in also and ask me any questions, email me in the chat. I'll be glad to answer. Other than that, Renee, I think that's about it for me. Let's see. Here we have um, scheduling of classes in surgical technology. Attendance is a huge uh, requirement in our programs. You have to be in lecture and lab to be able to learn the skills and pass your uh, lab skills test. Um, absences will not make you successful. Also, you're required to um, be present for clinical as well. Clinical times vary throughout each semester, but majority you're going to be in class three to four times, three or four days a week. Um, clinicals start at 6.15 and the latest one ends at 2.30 in the afternoon. So you have to be able to report to your hospital early in the mornings. Um, we try to prepare you as best we can before you do actually go into clinicals. Clinicals will start in January, um, so your first semester, you're, you're, you are preparing um, in the lab. You'll be able to do basic setups and such, and then you will move to clinical in January, and you will remain in clinical throughout the remainder of the program. Let's see. You are also required to um, find your own transportation to and from clinicals, and we cannot guarantee you a certain hospital, like I said before. Uh, you will be um, given a slot at a uh, hospital that we have available. Do the next slide. Okay. Um, are there any questions or uh, concerns that you may have that Dee and myself can answer or maybe Sandra Brooklyn in regards to admissions? There is a question in the chat um, about if students have a previous Complio account, would they be able to utilize that account or would they need uh, a new one? Would the account have expired? So if you could maybe talk to that, that would be great. Okay. I, I just responded back to that. Um, and I think Zakaya is a student of mine now in sterile supply. So that is a great question. So what will happen is you will be responsible, Zakaya and all surgical tech who already have an account. You will have to get in touch with Compilio once you get it accepted and have them switch it over to your course of surgical technology. All your information as far as all your immunizations and all that should transfer. Um, it is up to really Complio and how it is set up if you have to have another drug screen and a background check, but you, I'm pretty sure you will have to pay the $97 to continue on for the next two years. Let's see. There's an additional question in the chat that is asking you to talk a little bit more about the course schedule um, and if classes are predominantly offered in the evenings for individuals who work full time during the day, just a little bit more about the kind of sequence and uh, when classes are offered. 
Okay, in the first fall, all our courses are offered during the daytime only, not at night. Uh, surgeries typically start at 7 a.m. in the morning. So therefore, if you took night classes, we could not guarantee that you would um, achieve your 120 required surgical cases um, to graduate. So therefore, classes are only in the mornings. Uh, in the first fall, they are on Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. Uh, from 8 a.m. to 1.30 p.m., I believe. Um, that can be subject to change as we uh, make the new schedule out for next year. The second semester and third semester, uh, you go to class on Mondays for eight hours, and then you are in clinical Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday from 6.15 to 2.30 in the afternoon. And then the fourth and fifth semester kind of drops off to only two days a week. You'll have one day of class and one day of clinical in the fall, second fall. And then you'll have one day of class and two days of clinical in the um, fifth semester, your second spring. So it is very heavy, um, your first three semesters. And then the fourth and fifth, it does drop off. So uh, we typically try not to schedule classes on Friday. That is not guaranteed, but I try to allow those that work weekend jobs or have a day that they can get appointments in such so they can they won't miss classes. Does that answer that question? Yes, thank you. Okay. Okay, for, and for anyone who joined us after we got started, I think we had a couple folks who um, had to join us a little later. Make sure that you chat your full name in the chat um, or type your full name in the chat. We want to make sure you get credit for attending this because one of the requirements for the application packet is that you attend an information session and you're doing that now. So we want to make sure you get credit for that. Um, and we, we want to offer... Um, more time for questions. I know I went through the application process rather quickly, so that may have led to some questions that you still had. Or if you have questions, you've got the advisor on the call. Um, you've got some good resources on the call right now. So if you have any other questions that you didn't chat, um, let us know. So there is another question in the chat um, that is uh, pertaining to kind of GPA and those courses that were highlighted on the rubric. So the student asks if they don't have all of those courses complete or they have a lower GPA from previous coursework, is there uh, a chance that they could still get into the program? So talking about a little bit more about the competitive nature of the program, but if they don't have all of those courses complete, are they eliminated from being considered? I can start and then if Sandra, the advisor, or anybody else wants to chime in, um, as the person who's gonna review the application, I will say it does not eliminate you, okay? Each year or every other year when we do the application process, um, each applicant pool kind of drives where the points are. So we don't really know what the strongest point's gonna be this year in the application process. Um, I will say that, of course, the more of those general education classes you have are going to give you greater points and make you a stronger candidate, but it doesn't knock you out by no means. Just because you don't have those doesn't mean we're not even going to review you and you're automatically out. It really does not because you may be up against 10 other students who don't have the same courses either. Um, and we won't know that until we start looking at all the applications. So do not let that discourage you. Um, like Renee and uh, Dee and even Sandra can tell you, if you do have the anatomy classes, um, if you do have some of those general education classes, it's going to help you be more successful when you get into the program, not just for the application, to be honest, because once you do get into the surgical technology classes, um, they are stringent that you're going to be very busy um, with that curriculum. And so anytime you can have already taken anatomy for sure, which is a tough class, that's going to help you for the program itself, not all, not necessarily just the application. So don't let it discourage you if you don't have um, any or all of those, it's okay. You're still going to move forward in the application process. We're still going to take a look at that application and give you just as much attention as the next person. But again, um, we may be looking at an applicant pool this year that a majority of the students just happen to have the anatomy course or the biology. I mean, the Englishes, they may have those, but we also may be looking at an applicant pool with a strong number of students that don't have those. Um, and we won't know that till we, till we begin. 
And I'd like to add too, um, we may accept 16, but we typically have people that drop out. They give up their spot because life happens, um, things change. So yeah, just because you don't have all the classes does not mean in, that you don't have a chance to get in. So. And I would also add to that, um, even if you don't have all of those classes now, please consider you have the spring semester and you have summer. So I would be more than happy to help you look at the classes that you still need for the Surge Tech program. And if you are accepted, having more of those completed will help you once you are in the program. So um, again, please reach out to me and I'll be glad to help you with looking at registering for spring and or summer classes. Seems like we've had some really good questions in the in the chat. Um, anything else? You can put it in the chat or you can unmute yourself and ask it. I'm sorry, I forgot to tell you, you can unmute to ask a question as well. I wanted to add too that um, everyone on here, if you, if you have admission questions, please reach out to Sandra or Brooklyn. Um, Dee and I know more about the program um, because Sandra and them can get more in the specifics of admissions, where if you have a, a question for, about the program, the schedule, the curriculum, et cetera, please reach out to Dee and myself. And of course, Dee does all the clinical requirements. So she, she's a guru, a complio, whether she, um, so she can answer every question for that. Uh, you said financial aid paid for the program. Um, Sandra, you want to take that one? A surgical technology is a two-year degree, so it is on the list of eligible programs. So, of course, financial aid is a very case-by-case. -case. It's going to depend on the student as far as what type of financial aid you um, are eligible for. But definitely the surgical technology program is part of the programs that are eligible to receive financial aid. I also want to add on here, um, we typically have 100% job placement. So if you're looking for a great job, this program is um, the one to choose because our hospitals love our surgical techs. So uh, you have a very high chance of obtaining a job. Typically, they're hired before they graduate. Um, they will graduate one week and go to work the next week. Um, and also, if you do not make it into the surgical tech program, I uh, advise you to consider the central sterile processing program. We're going to make it into one semester starting in the fall. So that will give you an opportunity to learn the instruments and uh, central sterile processing that plays a part with the surgical technologist program. So that's a great option um, to do while you're waiting for our ne next admitting day of 2025. Um, I had a question for a clinical placement. I know you said we don't get to choose the hospital, which I already knew that, um, but we would make sure that it's kind of like close to where you stay, right? Because I live in Charlotte. <laughs> so um, do we, will I be able to get like a clinical site that's closer to where I live or it's just kind of, you know, whatever happens? I'll chime in on that a little bit. That's really that's a, not an easy question to answer. Um, when I look at placement, I do look at kind of the closest. But as of right now, the closest to Charlotte is Rowan Hospital. And they only accept one to two students at the most. The rest are more in the Winston-Salem area. So we do not have any hospitals for surgical tech at this point in Charlotte. But I do have plenty of students now in my sterile processing from the past and in surgical technology that travels. The hardest part for that will be your clinical because your clinical usually starts at 6.15 to 6.30 in the morning.
That was an excellent question. So this is a real good time. If you guys have very specific questions about clinicals and requirements, definitely ask those. Um, it sounds like the surgical technology program will be a pretty exciting career to choose. So I know I'm excited about reviewing all y'all's applications, um, but we've still got some more time on the call. So feel free to ask any more questions um, while we're here. I see Christy asked, is the program offered at Davie campus or Davidson? It's prime, It's only uh, offered on the Davie campus, lecture and lab, and then your clinicals are at various hospitals. There is a question if um, you could talk a little bit more about central sterile processing program and the classes for that and then how that could contribute to the surgical technology application and, and just the career and program of Central Sterile itself. Do you wanna highlight? Uh, sure, um, Central Sterile Processing, it is part of really the operating room also. Um, you can get a job at dental offices, um, you can get a job at ambulatory centers, which are surgical centers or the hospital. And basically what it is, is you're sterilizing instrumentation and getting them ready for surgery. Um, there is very many various ways to sterilize instruments. Um, you can see some of the people on our call here are some of my central sterile processing students now. Um, Things are going to change up a little bit coming up, being we're changing it to a one semester. So it's going to be a little bit more fast paced. The classes are going to be longer, um, but you will get the same information. Um, there's two kind of curriculums you can go by. One is called H HSPA, if you would like to Google it when we get off here, or the other one is CBSPD, and I will put them in the chat probably before we leave so you'll be able to do it. I advise you to go on there. They, it is not an accreditation program because they are not an accredited program, um, but I have 100% job placement for that program also. Um, so other than that, it's kind of hard. There's many jobs you can do, um, but look at the two websites and it'll tell you a great deal about it. So I see also Zakaya has a question. Would the placement process kind of be the same as it was central sterile processing? Yes, Zakaya, because it's me who is pretty much sitting down deciding where things go. So yes, it's very similar. Um, I do try to look at where you live to make it a little bit easier. Depends on to how many people can go, how many places. Um, some hospitals accept more students than others and so on and so forth. There's also a question in there about central sterile processing, about it, whether or not it's an out-of-pocket expense. It's the same sort of answer for the question about surgical technology. Um, central sterile processing is on the list of our eligible programs. It is a certificate program, but it has a total of 16 credit hours associated with it. So it is eligible for uh, federal uh, Pell Grant and other types of financial aid. George, I see your question. Um, we have numerous sterile processing clinical sites, even including Charlotte as well in the Presbyterian area, Statesville, um, all the way up through Winston-Salem. So um, if the VA is interested, if they have students typically, we could get a spot with them, but it's um, we would have to reach out to them. They reach out to us and we... Uh, complete the paperwork and such for that. That is a great place to work. So there's a question about the review process. When um, will a student fill out the form to tally up points or is that something that Sandra does for us? And I'll start my video. Um, so that is during the review process. So Sandra does have access to um, the system that 
provides the checklist and allows you to upload documentation to support your application and allows you to submit your application uh, for final review. Um, but Brooklyn Edwards, Ms. Edwards, is really the one that's going to do uh, the majority of that application review. So during the application review process, that's when all of the points are tallied up to provide you with the overall score. Um, so if you're interested, you're welcome to do that process in person, so to speak. So if you're interested in coming into the Enrollment Center on the Davidson campus or meeting with um, Sandra over on the Davie campus, uh, we can do that review as long as all of your materials are submitted. We can do that review with you and show you exactly how many points you have for the review. Otherwise, we would be doing it virtually once we receive your completed application, um, and then it would go into a ranking process based on your score. Um, so I hope that answers the question about uh, filling out the form, uh, because that form is actually for the review process. We're the ones filling that out based on the information that you've provided. Great questions. And any question that is super specific to you as a student, or if you leave here um, this evening and you forgot to ask a question or want to follow up, if you have a question about a document that you need to upload or have a question about if you're ready for review, uh, feel free to reach out to the pwsc at davidsondavy.edu email that's listed on the screen um, that Ms. Edwards uh, manages, but I also have access to, so I'm able to help answer any questions related to um, the surgical technology review process and application. So feel free to reach out. Um, as you know, Sandra Porter is a great resource on the Davy campus um, and very uh, knowledgeable about the surgical technology and central sterile processing um, program. So if you have any questions, um, please feel free to reach out to any of us and we'd be happy to direct you to the right resources. Um, and we'll also share uh, Sandra's email in an email um, to you all after we conclude this program. So tomorrow be on the lookout for an email for those of you who registered um, in advance and we will get the recording of this session to you. Uh, and then we'll also share some helpful hints um, as well as email addresses so that you can uh, reach out if you do have anything uh, that you missed on the call. I would like to also add that if you want to reach Dee or myself, the best way to reach us is via email. We are in clinical a lot, so um, we are in and out of our offices at various times. So the best way to contact us would be um, via email. That way, if we are at clinical, we can respond to it and get you an answer right away. Um, just one more thing, Renee, I'm not sure if you touched base on that too. When we were talking about sterile process, not sterile process, surgical technology, excuse me. Um, you are required to purchase black scrubs for the program and a white lab coat. And you also have to have black leather shoes. Um, that will be more in an orientation that we discuss that. Um, also with that comes a little bit of little things like no perfume, no cologne, no um, eyelash extensions, no false nails of any kind. Your fingernails cannot be painted of any kind. Um, and no jewelry while you're in their clinical site or when we're doing lab. So if that's something that is a concern to you, just think about that now, just to go ahead and give you a heads up. Those are hospital policies also. So we follow by the hospital policy. Okay, well, it sounds like you guys have had some really great questions. Um, some really good information was provided today as well. Um, we'll give another minute or so to see if you have any other questions that you want us to answer while we're on the meeting. And again, we are going to get this recording out to you guys that registered for the session, likely tomorrow. And we'll include some information. We'll give you our contacts, the other additional um, great resources we have on the meeting today, such as D. Edwards and Sandra. We will get that um, information to you as well. 
um, in that email. So you can always ask questions of us, but are there any other questions um, or comments you have now? I don't see any in the chat. Okay, well, we thank you for joining us for the surgical technology information session. Again, if you have further questions, concerns, um, don't hesitate to contact us. We wanna make sure um, we make this process as easy as possible um, and make sure you understand the process. So we thank you. You all have a good evening. Thanks everyone. Thanks for joining us.